Testing, testing, one, two, ichi, ni, san. All right, we're live. Hi, guys, and welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. Today, we're going to be using the Pico Neo3 Link DP cable hooked up to Google Earth VR, because Google Earth VR, everybody, is just amazing. It's amazing. You could travel the world, go in space, rotate the planet, go into the landscapes, then Go to Google Street, you put the controller there, you go into Google Street, you see the VR 360 pictures, go on tours, you walk around, it's absolutely amazing, guys. The only thing missing from Google Earth VR, honestly speaking, is multiplayer. Only thing missing is multiplayer. It's an absolute beauty of an app. However, I never tried it with the Pico Neo 3 Link. So guys, does it work with the Pico Neo 3 Link? What are the graphics like with the Pico Neo 3 Link? And do the controllers work? Do I have to do any binding? Do I have to change anything? That's what we're going to be exploring together. So guys, let's just transition over. I'm going to show you my little setup first. So the first thing I want to show you is the actual DP4K software itself, which is here. And when you start it off for the very first time, it's very simple. You just download it from the website. And then you go here, and you'll see two options, Wi-Fi and DP. So for Wi-Fi, I normally put it on HD, the 90 hertz, then standard. However, if you found, if you find, sorry, that your you know connection is too laggy or something like that, then all you have to do, what I suggest you do, is you just bring it to 72 and then maybe to smooth, something like that. And if it's good, then bring it up to SD. Otherwise, just leave it on 90 hertz, HD should be fine. And then you have a DP here. Make sure that if you're on the Wi-Fi, however, that you are streaming directly next to your router. If you're away from your router, guys, go and check out the previous videos about the Pico Neo 3 Link. I talk about it. Uh, all right, so let's go back. And then for DP, normally I put it on standard because this means that it applies to most games. If the controllers don't work in the game, switch to compatibility mode. So let's see if that is something that we're going to need. Uh, you can start auto start Steam VR and you can show open Steam VR also here and select the language based on different languages as well. And then you can click save. However, for me, it's already saved. And all you have to do the first time round when you start your PC, just basically click first. Now, before you, before you launch the DP cable, uh, sorry, make sure that your driver is either the AC interface or for me, it's Sonic Studio Virtual Mixer, okay? So we'll just leave it on AC interface. Otherwise, you will not get any audio inside of the actual VR headset itself. So let me just click on Start DP, uh, DP Connection. There we go. And then it's telling me that it's checking for the headset status. So now what I need to do, excuse me, with the mic, I just need to go in the headset and then click on Start Play. Basically, it's that easy once my boundary is done. And then once I'm inside of the actual headset, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna see the DP, start DP connection. So I'll just start that. And then boom, automatically you will see on my PC what's gonna happen is SteamVR should start automatically. I shouldn't have to do anything whatsoever. Yes, it has started. And then now I'm inside my headset. I'm just gonna click on Google Earth VR. And Google Earth VR should automatically now uh, come up on the actual screen. There we go, it's here. Let me make it bigger. And then let me put in the uh, headphones inside of the VR headset. There we go. As you can see, it's there. And then let me just take off. Let me just take off. I'm not going to move my headset fast. Let me just take off my headphones from my head. All right, so we're back inside of the headset now. So let's do this together now. So far, so good. The whew, the uh, the graphics are very good. So far, so good. Just need to adjust my headset a little bit. Now, I do talk about some tips and tricks in some previous videos, and I find it much nicer to wear a cap, much more comfortable, much more snug. And also my headphones, I do prefer to wear those headphones. They do fit very snug on my head as well. The headset is not protruding. 
below the ears. And you can see here the controllers. Wow, the graphics is so clear. There's pretty much no green, uh, screen door effect whatsoever. It's pretty, pretty awesome in here. However, the proportions are very much like what I've been talking about in other, uh, in other you know, uh, games. The controllers feel, it just feels a little bit overblown a little bit compared to the HP Reverb G2. I find that the proportions in the HP Reverb G2 are more or smaller a little bit. They fit, it, it doesn't feel as if I'm in a, an, looking through a magnifying glass so much. Um, it just feels a tiny, teeny bit disproportionate, but not to the point that it disturbs me. It doesn't disturb me so much, but I can definitely see it compared to the HP Reverb G2. Even the controllers feel a little bit uh, overblown. So let's start. There we go. Ooh, I can hear the sound. And now it's daylight. Let's go into space. Ooh! Whoa! Oh man, that was awesome. Really, really awesome. So that definitely works. I can definitely move around like this. So this controller is no issue whatsoever. Oh man, I'm so immersed. I'm in space. I'm so excited. Oh, and the graphics are absolutely phenomenal. I have to, I have to say, I really have to say it's phenomenal in here. The only thing that I think is a great shame about the Pico Neo 3 Link is that not all the games are compatible on Steam VR. So developers, please get hold of Pico Interactive and Pico Interactive, please go and tap on every developer's door that you can think of and get their games to be compatible with your headset because honestly, it is amazing in here using the Pico Neo 3 Link with the 4K DP cable in Google Earth VR. Let me just uh, till the earth. Oh my God. Wow, that was a bit fast for me. All right, if you're not used to VR, that might be uncomfortable for you. However, there are options to make things a bit more comfortable. Oh man, this is amazing. I do confirm I didn't have to bind any controllers whatsoever. Everything is working absolutely well. I can feel, I can feel the earth, like I can feel some vibration or something going in here. And the sound effects are just amazing. And look, let me just look around for you guys. Hopefully in the future there will be some comets and you'll see some other planets around, moving around, shaping around. The light is definitely changing. When I, when I look here on the center, then the light on the left-hand side changes. So basically, the constellation of the Milky Way over there brightens up, and then when I look straight, it dims down. So I find that pretty funny, to be honest. There's no light leaking, however. I think it's just the effect from the game, maybe. I don't know, because it dims down when I look straight. It brightens up when I look this this straight, so it brightens up on the right hand side. What about the left hand side? Let me check. No, it doesn't brighten up when I look here, and the constellation over there doesn't brighten up. So it's only when I look on the left hand side, then it brightens up. Very strange. And when I look straight, constellation again will dim down. Wow, but these graphics are really amazing. Very cool, very good, very crisp, very sharp. Very, very impressed, I have to admit. And do hit the notification bell after you subscribe because I will do similar tests using, of course, the HP G7 Fury laptop workstation ZBook. Of course, guys, I'm using the RTX 2070 with my i7-9700K at the moment and my Hero 11 Maximus motherboard. All right, let's get back inside. Ooh, man, this is so trippy. Whoa, so trippy. Really, really trippy, guys. Absolutely amazing. Whew. Oh, man. All right, where am I going now? Where am I going now? Let's till the earth. Whew, here we go. This is how it gets trippy. So in terms of, in terms of the actual 3D rendering, I guess it's, uh, it will depend, first of all, on your internet connection. It also depend on the connection from the game to the cloud server because they are actually rendering the images for you. Let's uh, first of all go to the settings. Let me go to menu. I just want to show you very quickly that if you don't feel comfortable inside of VR, 
Uh, you can go to comfort mode. Let me skip. And normally, oh, it hasn't actually shown the comfort mode, funny enough. Uh, for comfort mode, normally you should see on the side something that will appear that will make it so that you don't have so much space. So it gives you more of a limited field of view is what it says. However, they put limited human scale. Maybe that was the reason. Ah, okay. Uh, music, you could put also, I don't hear music at the moment. Map labels, okay. The comfort mode is not working, guys. Just to show you, it is not working. I will do another test with the HP Reverb G2 and see whether it's an app thing or whether it is a, uh, it is a Pico Neo 3 thing, because I'm not quite sure. I'm testing this for the very first time with you. We're doing this together. All right. Um, Let's go to Rio de Janeiro. Hello, Brazil. Shout out to Brazil. How are you guys? Ah, oh, man, look at this. Ah, there we go. Comfort mode definitely works. It works basically when you move. I can see it there below. You can see the grid also, I believe. And then when I move, there we go. It only shows the middle, as you can see. As you can see, more grid as I'm as I'm moving my moving my headset, you'll see more grid on the side, and that is basically the comfort mode, guys. Yeah, very very cool. All right, just checking the microphone is on, and then what you can do is you can go to street view as I mentioned before. So let's just bring the. You can see this bubble here in front of you, right? Let's just go to screen view. Ooh. All right, and then you could basically move around. Now, on other controllers, you can actually click and move around, but it seems that with these controllers, it's not pos possible to do that. So I have to physically move around. However, you can go on a tour. That works perfectly fine. So that's pretty cool. And basically, Google stitched all the various different images, and if you went up there, up the road, then you would be able to go. Seems that so far this is the limit as to where we can go. And okay, there we go. And then if you want to go out, uh, you just have to. Oh, this is how you rotate. Okay, so you can rotate now the image by clicking our grab button. So all good, all fine. And then we could just c uh, continue on our little tour. There we go. That's pretty cool. You could just grab again. There we go. So we're in Brazil, guy, going down the road. This is pretty amazing, isn't it? It's very immersive. And I have to say that the quality of the pictures, of course, will very much depend on the pictures that were uploaded to the actual server. Apparently, Google Earth actually, what they do is they update the, uh, the actual Google Earth app itself every month, apparently. However, of course, uh, it really depends, you know, whether they can't, they can't update the entire world every month. So sometimes what's pretty funny is that you have one image that is from, let's say, 2011, another image is from 2020, another image from 2015. Uh, that, that can be really funny sometimes when you see that. I haven't actually, I saw it once. I think it was in Italy somewhere when there was one wall. Uh, they had repainted the wall and one section of the wall was like red and the other section of the wall was like blue. It was really, really funny to see that. Um, really, and then there was a, a person, half the body was missing because uh, basically it was different, different time. Uh, that was pretty hilarious when I, when I noticed that. Uh, but it is quite rare for me to actually notice this thing. So let me just get out of Street View now. So I just bring, bring my headset away. And then I can just use the grab icon, grab button again to move around. And let me just uh, go to my menu settings again and switch off comfort mode. There we go. So that we can actually see things a bit more properly. Wow, absolutely amazing. Of course, you can change the uh, can change the time of day, guys. Yeah, look, this is bright daylight now. Really awesome stuff. Wow, the graphics are really, really amazing. Really clear. Uh, I can barely see any screen door effect whatsoever. I mean, it is very, very imp impressive especially compared to the HP Reverb G2. I mean, the HP Reverb G2 is still top dog, but wow, I'm very, very impressed inside of here for this kind of experience. 
how detailed it is. Uh, unfortunately, as you can see though, um, the actual statue hasn't rendered fully. Um, so I'm not quite sure why, what that is. Uh, but normally, I think on the original HP Reverb G2, if I'm not wrong, I have to go and look at a previous video. Do go and check out the uh, best app of 2022, which is basically I talk about Google Earth. Go and check it out over there. Go and check out whether you see the difference between, um, you know, the Pico Neo 3 Link Google Earth VR experience and also the, uh, yeah, it's not fully rendered as you can see. So now I'm getting closer. It's not rendering, rendering fully. So and let me just check the resolution of the actual in Steam VR very quickly. So I'm just going to uh, open my Steam VR, go to video settings. I can't record this part, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm 2352 by 2244, which is actually too high. So I'm just going to bring it down to 1982. There we go. Uh, and I'm also going to just double check very quickly it's actually, the refresh rate is actually 72 Hertz, guys. It is not 90 Hertz, just to confirm that you can have 120 Hertz inside of the headset, but uh, in the actual DP4K cable, it is running at 72 Hertz. It is not running at 90 Hertz, guys. I just want to let you know this thing, uh, just in case you were actually wondering. But yeah, as you can tell, the map hasn't fully rendered so this could be a uh, issue with, with Google Earth itself because normally it does take time to render things. It's a great shame that the actual statue, the head and the hands haven't fully rendered yet, it looks like. It seems that way anyway. I'm not quite sure. I can't confirm 100%. It's not quite sure, guys. Can't confirm. All right, let's go uh, to New York now and say hi to some of our American friends. Hi, America. Big shout out to you. 4th of July is coming very soon, a few weeks time. Wow. And it's all summertime, of course. Really amazing. The buildings, everything is so detailed. Uh, and I'm using the middle, uh, in terms of my field of view, my IPD, I'm using the 58mm, which is the middle um, setting inside the DP, uh, the Pico Neo 3 Link headset. And I do have very good field of view. It's about, I would say, a good 100, something like that. Definitely much less narrower compared to the Oculus Quest 1 or the HP Reverb G2 or the Oculus Go, for sure. The Oculus Quest 2, I can't tell you because I never bought it. We don't carry any Meta Quests on this channel, as you know. We're one of the only five or 10 channels on YouTube who do not support Meta's things whatsoever. However, do go and check out the, the video if you are a Quest fan. Uh, about the update that I posted a few hours ago this morning uh, or your evening ET time. Yeah, the graphics are amazing in here. Everything does still feel a little bit disproportionate. Things do look a little bit magnified. It doesn't really bother me or disturb me. It's just that if it's your first time in VR, you're not really going to notice it, to be honest. But because I do a lot of VR, especially with the HP Reverb G2, I can definitely notice it. It definitely feels a, bit, a little bit overblown for me. It just feels like it's a little bit magnified compared to using the HP Reverb G2 for sure. But guys, I'm really having a blast in here. It's really, really good. Oh, one issue just happened now. I think that must be a bug with the actual, uh, something happened. I don't know if it's a software issue on the Pico or a software issue in the game, but I just lost the tracking of my Pico just now. I don't know if you noticed, and it must have pressed a button automatically on its own as it brought me up here. So I don't know if it's a, I think it's more of a bug to do relating with the software and Pico as opposed to just the Pico headset and also the actual um, the actual app itself. I think it's a, a, a cross in between. Let's go to Germany. Big shout out to Germany. Hi, German. Germany. Uh, it will probably be the morning by the time you see this video if I post it today in the evening. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Really, really good. Really nice. The resolution of the image, uh, again, the castle feels a bit overblown. Um, there is no light leaking. I have to stress this, no light leaking, especially in this app. Uh, and I haven't noticed any light leaking, by the way, since the update of the Pico Neo 3 Pro uh, in Automobilista 2 as well. So please do go and check out that video, which I posted yesterday, 24 hours ago, um, 
from the day of this recording with Automobilista 2 using the 4K DP cable. And I am very sorry about some of the black screen in there, although you can hear my voice over the black screen because I by accident I, by, by accident, I had deleted some footage on the uh, editor uh, in my uh, Adobe Premiere and I didn't realize until after I had uploaded the video. So very, very sorry about that, guys. But yeah, this looks really, really nice, really, really awesome. Let's check out the, the castle. Yeah, the images are rendering pretty cool, pretty well. No leaking of light whatsoever. And as you can tell, they're actually doing some repairs here. Look, there's a couple taking a selfie, isn't that? <laughs> this is what I was talking to you about, the, the different in period, different period of time where they take the pictures. Wait, let me put it back on my head. There we go. So it's possible that although it doesn't look like it from this point of view. Something's happened here, maybe, I don't know, you can, oh, okay, so maybe it's the 360. The person put the camera on top of their head, but they didn't actually look down properly enough. But it's funny because the camera only picked up half of their body and not the other half. But then you could see here the shoes, the legs. Maybe it's just their camera, it just doesn't look great. What can I tell you? But yeah, you can see here, very sharp, very crisp, very good. And then I can see the castle. It looks beautiful, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Up there, you can see the mountains of the snow. Absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing, guys. Really, overall, great, great impression. Really, really awesome. And of course, as I said earlier, yeah. you can just grab it, move around. And then let's see if we can go on a tour. No connected photos nearby, okay. So we can't go on a tour here. All right, we're out again. And then you can go faster if you want to, of course. Let's go to the lake. Oh God, it just looks so amazing, everyone. It looks so beautiful. Uh, I think only over there at the back, when I look further back uh, in the horizon, then I can see some jagged jagged edges going on over there. It doesn't become, I mean, the, the graphics are not blurry. They're super clear, but I do see jaggedness uh, occurring over there. But otherwise, apart from that, I mean, all the mountains in front and the lake and everything is absolutely stunning. Really perfect. In fact, what you're probably seeing now on your screen is pretty much what I'm seeing inside of VR in terms of the rendering of the graphics. Because when I looked at Automobilista 2 using the 4K DP cable in the video I posted not too long ago, um, you know, it was pretty much the same. So, all right, let's go in here. Wow. Now the quality of the picture in here is not fantastic this time. It is a lower resolution picture, so it's a bit more blurry in here. However, it's just nice to be able to see what it looks like. I'd love to go and have a meal there. That'll be really awesome. And the Google car has not come here, so unfortunately I cannot go here. Cannot go here. All right, let's uh, see finally some other options. So fly, we know, tilt the earth, we know, drag, we know. And then of course, uh, let's go back up. You just have to point your controller as to wherever you wanna go. Absolutely amazing guys, really, really amazing. Let me, uh, let me see if I can tilt the earth. No, I can't from here. I have to go further up. Absolutely amazing. All right, let me go backwards. And then let's just change the, uh, the time of day to see the difference. There we go. Just point towards the sky and then press the trigger and then you'll see the difference. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Whoo, guys, this looks absolutely beautiful. I mean, what can I tell you guys? Look at these mountains just appearing there. Oh man, it's just so beautiful. And I can hear the wind whisking around my ears. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. What can I tell you guys? There we go, now we can tilt the earth. Now I don't like that part when it just suddenly rotates very fast. I think Google Earth could get rid of that. That would be good. But yeah, here we go guys. And then you can see some of the earth hasn't fully rendered either because you can see the little squares. But yeah, it looks really, really beautiful. There we go. Absolutely beautiful, guys.
Really beautiful. All right, let me take off the headset and uh, let's start to read some comments because at the end of the day, guys, in terms of my final thoughts, it's beautiful. YouTube.com slash VR Essentials, of course. All right, so... To uh, read the instructions. Let's go to the comments from the previous video, which was the Pico Neo 3 Link. There we go. Lin. I just want to give a shout out to everybody who, you know, uh, provided your comments. So we'll go to a couple of videos. Uh, Virtual Real says, Hi, mate, I would seriously check out DisplayPort and CVR section. My is very recommended. In its current state, it's not advisable, especially for prolonged play. Headset has a huge bug in CVR resolution right now. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned before, uh, thank you very much for your, for your comment, Virtually Real. So basically, as I mentioned before, there is a little bit of a proportion issue inside of the game where everything feels a little bit magnified. Um, depending on the app, it can be more pronounced than others. Generally speaking, it's okay, it's manageable, especially if you've never done VR before, then you won't, I guess, so much notice it because it'll be your first your first time in VR. But for those who've been in VR quite a while will definitely notice it. It definitely feels like you're, you're just, everything's been blown out a little bit. Uh, I would say by 1.3 degree, 1.3 X, let's say, something like that. Not by 2X or 3X or 4X, it's not so much bigger that it's so uncomfortable. It's just a little bit uncomfortable um, for me. But I can make do with it. I'm still very happy, especially when I'm uh, streaming wirelessly to, to, the, uh, to the PC. Um, now, there isn't so much that issue whatsoever, uh, not as pronounced as with the DP4K cable plugged in. So it could be that it's just a 4K DP cable issue and not so much a Pico Neo 3 link issue. Um, I have addressed this to Pico and I will address it again with them uh, just so that they can take a look and see what happens or whether the devs need to get in touch with Pico and Pico needs to get in touch with the devs in order to fix that. Issue, uh, thank you very much for your comment. And then we also have Eugene Sia, who says, uh, let me just make it bigger so you can see. A VR reset position set on steering wheel with button when to set the AMS menu. So basically this video is about Automobilista 2 using the uh, Pico Neo 3 Link and I couldn't find the button to reset it. I have to use the, the, the controller and also using the G923. Uh, he says there's a button you can put can you tell me how to set the button? That'd be really cool. Of course, I will go online, I'll check it out. But if you able to let me know before I can go out and find the solution, that would be really awesome. Then I can give you another shout out in a future video. All right, guys, let's just give some shout outs to new people who actually subscribed to the channel. And also do remember, guys, to leave all your comments below so that basically I can read your comments in other future videos as well. All right, let's go to date subscribe. And you make it bigger. I'd like to welcome Enforcias or Enforci CI4S, Felipe Villela, um, Ario Valdo, Altavata, uh, Me Wi Fry, Matt F1, Lyndon Telesford, Count Lazard, Mark Stewart, Monaco France, and Toad Noodle. Is that right? Toad Noodle. Wow, that's an amazing, amazing name. Guys, thank you so much for joining the family. You guys are freaking amazing. And thank you to everyone else who I haven't mentioned today. And also those who have the privacy settings uh, set to private so I don't actually see your name when you join. Thank you so much for joining as well. You guys are freaking amazing. You are going to be part of the giveaway where we give to one person a brand new HP Reverb G2, a second person, a pair of cyber shoes, the gaming station, the carpet, the chair that goes everything with it, and a third person, the 50 US dollar voucher that you will be able to redeem against any map App, sorry, in the Meta Oculus Quest store, Pico Link store, or also the uh, HTC Vive port or Steam VR store for that respect. All right, guys. Whew. Thank you so much for spending some time together. I will see you in another video very soon, as well as, of course, in the comments and in that video there. I think it's, I think it's that one, the one on, the, on my left anyway. It could be your right. I think it's that one. All right. See you later, guys. Take it easy. Bye.